Hines batted in. One of the tougher leadoff men in baseball. Doug Griffin flips it over to Scott and there's one away. Strike three. Lonborg strikes out Blair. Billy Hunter coaches at third for the Orioles. George Stoller at first. Scotty and a fine play on both ends. They make it. Powell is out. Aparicio with Scott coming up with that low throw. And both pitchers look good in the first inning. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. And at the end of one, it is nothing to nothing. Brooks Robinson into the corner. Rico around first. If the Orioles had uh, played the whole game last night over in Washington. Robinson to Johnson to Powell. The 30th double play of the year is 280. Two homers and 16 runs batted in. going over and he makes the catch Robinson flies to left <laughs> Petroselli picking up the ball Griffin's got it flips it over to Scott quick as that a double play Pitcher, not overpoweringly fast, but gets you out. But he has good motion in his delivery, and is what they, what we call sneaky fast, and a good competitor. Facing Dwayne Josephson, there's a drive to left field, and this one is gone. Josephson homers for the Red Sox. Buford didn't even go back on that ball. He just looked up, and he knew it was gone. Josephson puts the Red Sox in front, batting 283. Belanger throws him out. Two strikes to Longboard. Strike three. Two out in the Boston third inning. Louis flied to Robinson and Wright in the first. Robinson to Powell and that's all is one by each club a home run by Dwayne Josephson he tried to drag it but right at Dobson no strain Durham North Carolina one of John Pesky's stopping off places to the opposite field he goes toward the wall and it's going to be a home run Dostrinsky goes to the opposite field and the Red Sox lead two to nothing number six for Yaz King pitches and one fastball awry he is three and two Strikes him out. Comes back to strike Petroselli out. And for Dobson, that's number three. Eddie Papowski, third base coach, gives George the three base hit sign. But he walks instead. The first walk given up by Dobson. 
fact, the first of his arms and his hand. He was a scrawny, skinny little kid when he was at Tigertown. It was even before you were over at Charleston. And this fellow really made himself a pitcher. Little nubber chased by Hendricks to Powell for the out, and the inning is over. That play going two to three. And the Red Sox pick up a run in the fourth on Yastrzemski's homer, one hit. They left one, and after three and a half innings, the Red Sox lead two to nothing. Jim has given up one hit so far. Brooks Robinson, single. He gets him with a fastball, had a, had a tail on it on the outside corner. And Buford is out of there. The second strikeout for Lonborg. On an 0-2 pitch, that was a pretty close pitch to take, uh, John. <laughs> Curveball hit high to left. Yaz back. And getting it near that 380 mark. Scott made a great play on Powell in the first inning. They have the Powell shift on. Three infielders to the right side of second base. And Griffin has it. <laughs> Good play by Doug, and Louie got out of his way in a hurry because he was playing over there, too. But Griffin throws out Powell, and it's a quick inning for Jim Lonborg. One, two, three again. He's retired seven in a row. After four complete, Red Sox two, Baltimore nothing. He went after the first pitch, too, in the third inning. the hole backhanded beautifully by Belanger got him good play by Mark Belanger at short oh can he pick it he goes in the hole as well as any shortstop in the league let's take a look at that once more in video replay uh, Belanger gets an awfully quick jump but that ball wasn't hit a Robinson has been troubled with an ingrown nail and there's a base hit to right center. Reggie throws it in. And the Orioles had the lead man on in the fifth inning. Lonborg had retired seven in a row. Lester Moran, formerly of uh, East Millinocket, Maine. Red Sox found now living down here. Wanted to say hello to his father who was watching the game tonight up in Maine. One two pitch. High to right field, and maybe trouble. It is high ball game. He walks Hendricks. First walk given up by Lonborg. 2-2. And Aparicio leads with a walk in the sixth. Second walk issued by Dobson. Score. Sixth inning. Here goes the runner and a fly ball to right field. Back goes Frank, still going. He leaps and makes the grab. And see if they get the double play. Here comes Louie back. He makes it back to first. Fine catch by Frank Robinson. Ned, let's take another look at that. Frank Robinson goes all the way back to the 380 mark, jumps up. His hand was partially hitting, hidden and made the catch. Of course, Lowy all the way up to second base had to come back. In a Detroit about to get underway. Janeski for Washington. Chance for Detroit. Drag butt. Scott must hurry. He does. Buford sliding and hustling, but he's out. Good play by George Scott as uh, Buford tries the drag. Scott has been playing some terrific first base lately. Let's take another look at that. Lonberg was just about in the way of the runner, but Scotty decided to take it himself. Jim Bunning for the Phils. 
The Mets have a three nothing lead over Atlanta after three and a half. Strike three and Blair is called out. He doesn't like it. That threaded the black on the outside corner. Show who had to cross over to the shortstop side of second. The third base side of second actually. That's 2-0 to Powell. Nope, he hit him, I guess. He hit him, grazed his uniform, apparently. Bugna wasn't even sure of it himself. Lonborg hit by a pitch, and we'll watch that one again. I think the ball just grazed Big John. He didn't want to take the base. It didn't look like it, but Luciano says you better take it. Looper and Louis has it. Nice catch running away for Louis Aparicio. And that takes care, as we see it again, of the Orioles in the sixth inning. A kind of a fist soft liner that Louis stuck the glove up on as he moved into the outfield grass. No runs, no hits, and one left. And after six innings of play, it's still two to two. And here's Ken. Thank you, John. Long drive to center field. Blair going back. And he'll look at this one. It's a home run. Billy Canigliaro hits one over the center field fence. And Boston is in front again, three to two. Paul Blair just simply turned and headed straight back. Look at it. You see that Blair takes his eye uh, right off the ball. He knew it was going to be very deep. And it's a home run for Billy Canigliaro, his sixth of the season. And Boston is in front again, three to two. That was really a home run. Josephson is knocked down. Josie hit a home run in the third inning. And he grounded the shortstop in the sprawling. Both bullpens are working. Here's a long drive to left field. Buford goes back, and it's a home run. And Josephson, as he was rounding first base, looked at Dobson. He gave him the look going, and he is going to make a pitching change. There will be a change here for Baltimore. Griffin flies to Don Buford. One out. Red Sox have won 24 and lost 11. They're in first, three games ahead of the Orioles. Fly ball to Frank Robinson. One away. This program is authorized under telecasting rights granted by the Red Sox, solely for the entertainment of our audience. And season in blocks, we had 128 last year. Here's Petroselli, batting 248, five homers, 28 runs batted in. Batting 389 over the last six ball games. The runner goes, and he's safe. Reggie Smith has stolen the second. Here's another look at it as Smith races down to second base and Coacher steals the bag. That's his fourth steal. He's been caught once. Pepper selling. Clay I throwing the screwball, which is a big pitch for Mike. He throws it often. Get excellent control of it. High for the ball, two and two. Oh, 
through into left field, and Johnson is on. Ray Johnson singles into left field. His average is 198, seven homers and 25 runs batted in. to Griffin, has to play at the first and gets Powell. Pearl Weaver said before the game today that if Powell does not do well today, but he's gone last night down the right field line, 16 runs batted in. And Petrus Kelly makes the grab. Beautiful play. Rich Robinson, who has made so many great plays himself, is robbed by a great play. Here's another look as Petroselli robs him of a base hit. No runs, one hit, and one left. And at the end of one, it is nothing to nothing. Say that play our spots is fast forward. I would think so, Ken, because he makes good pitches, but he had us with Hooker up there. He went three and two on him, but he was throwing the ball away and up. There's the two ball, and that is strike three, two out. I used to uh, spot my fastball, John. I threw it about every box. He had three hits opening day against New York. I didn't have more than two RBIs in the game previously. Belanger makes the play on him. The Red Sox go quickly in the second. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. And after one, the the Seabird and Longboard, who, uh, if you're a switch hitter, I don't think you'd want to go up there against right-handed. Hits one to the right center, Canigliaro. Back the ball. There. There's the second base. Canigliaro came in. Billy Hunter, the third base coach. There's a base hit. Yastrzemski charging the ball, juggles it. Blair scores. He has scores to second. Another record in singles to left. Griffin to Aparicio to Scott for a double play. Hope knocks it down and throws the first for the out. That is all. That ball was hit very sharply, knocked down by Ray Culp. And in the second inning, there was one run when you will play a night game. In the National League, Atlanta and New York won one at the end of one. Stone against Seaver. Griffin gets ball four. So the leadoff man is on in the third inning for the Red Sox. The Dodgers lead the Cubs one to nothing at Oregon, Montreal, Cincinnati at Philadelphia, San Diego at St. Louis, and San Francisco at Houston. Ray Culp batting 105. Bunts. Playoff throws to Johnson. One four on the sacrifice. Suddenly the sun has come out here. It's been overcast. It's still windy. Kind of a swirling wind. It's difficult to read on the field. There's a drive to left foot steep. Buford goes back, and this one's gone. A home run over the 300 and the seventh home run of the year for Reggie. And a big one it is. There's a fly ball to right field. 
Dave Whitman has this one. And that's all. In the middle of the third inning, Mike Cuellar won 24 last year and 23 the year before last. Foul ball. And the year before that, with Houston, he was 8 and 11. Line drive, base hit for Buford. Smith up with the ball. And with one out in the last half of the third inning, Ron Buford had it one out today with a man on. Fly ball towards Smith. And Reggie makes the catch in foul ground. Ball kept drifting over. That's all in the third. No runs, one hit. Robinson leading off for the Orioles. Red Sox still hold a two-to-one, two-to-one lead. Not a squirmer. Cup pitching, and there's one hit well to left. It is gone. Home run just inside the back. One ball, two strikes. Game tied, two-two. Five hits for the Orioles, just one for Boston. Ah, let's see what Griffin can do. He's got to, uh, can't make the play on it. And they give Blair a base hit. Runner going. And the hit and run base hit the center field will send Blair streaking the third base where he will hold. Nicely executed hit and run. Well, this will get a run home. Billy Canigliaro making the catch. And the throw will be... Not cut off, although Scott tried to, but no advance was made from first to second. The Orioles take the lead, however, as a sacrifice fly by Belanger gets Blair home. RBI number 10 for Mark. <laughs> I threw the ball back on the ground while you're looking at Eddie Popowski. And Griff walks for the second time. Fastball misses high. Red Sox have a runner with one out. And a base hit to right field for Ray Kopp. Down toward the corner, covered well by Ruttenman. And over the third goes Griffin. So Mr. Kopp helps himself immeasurably. Robinson goes for one, for two, and they've got the double play to Wendy. On deck is Dave Johnson, along with uh, Jay Mazzone. There's the ball pretty well hit to right field. Maybe trouble. It is a home run. Just into the first throw in right. John Buford getting his fourth home right there that last pitch. It might have been a little low, and he had a half swing or a check swing, and it just ticked his back. This is what Powell has been doing. I'm not sure he will just open up a little bit more or take a bigger opening stance. Powell's that one back. Two and two. And when you do this, it looks sometimes that you're not ready to swing the bat. That ball he fouled out was right up in his wheelhouse, but he just behind the ball. All right, fellas. Hope he stays that way. Where do we leave town? Two and two to him. Got him. Breaking pitch off speed, and Powell strikes out. 
That's four for Ray Culp. Over the auxiliary fence, right against the old bleacher wall, which is 360 feet away, and there's a little triangle there, and the ball just went right in the pocket. Almost takes Culp's head off with that one. Boy, is he hitting this series. Two for three today for Brooks. Five hits in the two games. Doubleheader tomorrow here at 2 o'clock the first game starts. First game will be televised. Blair strikes out on a curve, number five for Culp. In the fifth inning, the leadoff home run. The Orioles take the lead 4-2. to two. That was his seventh of the year. He leads the Red Sox in that department. First time up, he reached on Cuellar's era. The left field, but Buford goes back. One out. Baltimore leading four to two, sixth inning. Hits the change up to Johnson at second. Two out. He's gone to three and two three times to Pepper Selly today. And that is three miles high. Dave Johnson calling for it. That's the inning, one, two, three. After five and one half innings at Memorial Stadium, it's the Orioles four, the Red Sox two. He's had trouble with the home run pitch twice today. But his fans seven. within striking distance. He trails 4-2. Here's Belanger cracking one to left, the base hit. Belanger is one for two now. He's had a sacrifice fly in an RBI. Right three. Canigliano is out. have 10 hits. Buford, Brooks Robinson, and Blair have two apiece. Johnson has one of them. There's a drive that's going to be good for extra bases. Canigliello cuts it off and it holds it to two with fast fielding. Bill Canigliello going over. Managed to get that ball. Here's another look at it. And you can see that um, by his cutting it off, he prevented Johnson from getting perhaps three bases out of that. Now as we come back, we see that Eddie Casco has gone to the mound. That is 11 hits for Baltimore. One out and a man on second, and the batter was going to be Powell. Brett has gotten up again, and... Uh, Casco is leaving. Brad and Nagy warming up. Line drive, base hit into right field. Johnson around third. Smith's throw is he's safe at home. a single into right field and Johnson comes in with the fifth Baltimore run. Here's another look at it as Smith throws into the plate but not in time. Johnson is safe at home. Now we're back and we will have a pitching change now. So as the Red Sox change pitchers this time, Paul will bat left-handed. Hmm. He's been switching on some right-handers. It's a high fly ball to a Griffin. And 
and that's all. And very quickly in the seventh inning, Nagy comes in and throws two pitches and gets two men. But the Orioles got another run on a pair of hits, and they leave one. And at the end of seven innings, Baltimore is ahead of Boston five to two. Blair going back makes the catch. Two. Smith rips one into center field, a base hit. The second hit for Reggie, the third for the Red Sox, and the lead man is on in the ninth. Yes, throws one to left field. Smith goes to second. Runners at first and second, and nobody up. catching coming out of the dugout. And Eddie Watt is warming up in a hurry out of the bullpen. Ordinarily, there's nobody out in the ninth inning. There is what? Drive to right center field, but Retmond is there. Smith goes back, tags up, and Reggie will go over to third base. Retman taking the fly ball off the bat of Rico Petroselli. Smith moves to third. Yastrzemski is on first. The batter is Scott. Ground ball to Belanger. The second for one. The first double play. And the ball game over. Scott hit the ball well. But Belanger converts it into a double play, and the Orioles have beaten the Red Sox in the second game of the series here by a score of 5-2. to two. We'll have a rundown for you in just a moment. the throw down stolen base Blair moves to second five ball deep to 
right field. The who back. It's a home run. Griffin makes the play. Good play by Doug Griffin. To nothing. Long drive to center field. And this one is long gone. A home run, Baltimore. Scott put on quite a show today in batting practice. Mahood at 286. No homers and three runs batted in. Playing today, Billy Canigliaro is back in Boston on military duty. Five ball to center. Again, the player going back. And he makes a great catch. Tremendous catch by Blair in center. Manning 277. Foul ball. Foul over. Nice catch. Griffin fouls out to the first baseman. In the second, one run on Scott's homer, and nobody left on. After one and one half, Baltimore is in front, three to one. for Peter Frank Robinson's three-run homer. George Scott has a solo homer. He has tried to pull the outside pitch, grounding to Johnson. Petroselli is up. He struck out in the first. And that is looped in the center field for a base hit. Rico is on. That's the third Red Sox hit. count and a base hit for Scotty in the right center field. Rico going to third. Here comes a throw. It's cut off at shortstop by Belanger and Rico is in at third base. The Red Sox have two base runners. Scott is fastball inside. One ball, two strikes. Petroselli at third base. Scott at first. One out. Curve ball. Belanger to Johnson. They got one, but not two, and a run score. Strike three. He's out of there. And the side's out. That's number four for Apollo. One run for the Red Sox as they chip away at uh, Jim. There were two hits and one man left. And after three and one half innings, it's Baltimore 3, the Red Sox heading tomorrow night at Fenway Park. Bill Lee will face Casey Cox tomorrow night at 7.30. Strike. The slow upbringing of a hand by the plate umpire, John Rice, miffs power a little bit. Thought it was a ball. Two and two. That always happens when you're going a little bit bad. Anything close or you take a attempted swing, it's always a strike. Well, if he was hitting 300, it'd have been a ball. That's what it seems to work out. I know that's the way it seems to hitters. Two and two. Very high. Reggie Smith over. Calling. 
One out. Up in the air to center field again. And there's Reggie. Two down. Getting that ball in right where he wanted it for a couple of pitches on a full count and having them fouled off. Johnson walks. Base hit to center field. Johnson stops at second. Two for two for Andy Etchebarren. Number eight. Himself. This will put the Orioles ahead by four to two. A single for Palmer. That's the Baron stopping at second and jump. There's Neggy in the bullpen. They hit the left side. Another one will score. Reggie falls down. Can't make the play and into second base goes Belanger. Five. Right now the Orioles now are right back to their three not to a three run lead. Red Sox had pecked away at Palmer and had gotten two of them back, but now it's five to two, and there goes Gary off to an early shower. Mike Nagy coming. Had uh, Blair, Blair kind of uh, all tightened up in there. One and two. Two outs. Runners at second and third. And he knocks it down. See if they can make the play. Nope, not in time. A run score. Six two. Up and throw in the first. It was too late. A run producing single for Blair. And there at third base is Belanger. Six to two ball game. Just in the fourth inning. Runner going to second. Pavletti. Going and a run that's going to score as they affect the double field. Up seven runs and seven hits in the three and two thirds innings he worked. And he took the left. Here comes Jasmensky. He's not going to make the throw. Blair scores. It's eight to two. Brooks gets back to first. Deck, Boom Powell. Running the base as well. Taking advantage of oh, that ball is really tagged. And it's out of here. Home run. Frank run. High and well hit into left. Mike Nagy, Dex Boog Powell. He comes close to Powell. Well, we're back. Maybe you didn't see that, but first pitch to Boog Powell after Frank's home run. He is warned by the plate umpire, John Rice, and Eddie Casco comes out to talk to Rice. Now look at the pitch again that you missed. Boog really had to go down in a hurry, and he looked out at Nagy, said something to him. Pasco talking now as we're back live to plate umpire Rice about the warning. Maybe Eddie talking about a ball getting away from Nagy, who's certainly <laughs> has had his own troubles without going getting into trouble with Boog Powell. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I believe this guy sleep. He hasn't been hitting, but this happened the other night, if you recall, when Dobson. Came close to Dwayne Josephson. The next pitch he hit out of the ballpark. I hope that wasn't held true here. Now. Three and two. Well, 
it started with a base on ball. All these have been scored, have been scored after two out, Ned. And right. Just can't tell what can happen in the ball game. A walk to Dave Johnson and then hits by the number eight hitter, Ench Barron, and the pitcher, Palmer. And Griffin makes the play to finally retire the side. And nobody left on base at the end of four. Carl Yastrzemski out. He has fly to center and grounded out. They're going 0-2. The Orioles again have a runner. And they First two men retire. in it. A homer. It is a home run. Right into the upper deck. That there we go. Three home runs for the Orioles today. Frank Robinson has two of them and Johnson one. Griffin making the play. One out. Hard shot. Doug stayed with it. Echebarren is finally retired. He went two for two before that. <laughs> Joe hitting the ball twice well today. Once he was robbed by Blair. Two for three in this game. A bunt single. And he drove one that... Uh, Smacked by the box, knocked down in the fourth by Nagy, but he couldn't make a play. George Scott. One out. at first. Petroselli to Griffin. And a low throw dug out nicely by Scott for a double play. Number four. Tilling away from the uh, left-handed batter. Scott for the out. Powell is fifth. Kuntz makes the play against Jim Palmer. Smith has a single in three trips. Johnson to Powell. Out at first base, the umpire was looking to see Kunkel whether or not Powell had held on. Brooks Robinson to Powell. Because the Orioles had given him just five runs. Overall, two to one to Oakland, May 9th, two nothing to the Red Sox. And then Washington beat him, uh, he beat Washington four to one on his last start. He's rolling today as express written consent of the Boston Red Sox is prohibited. 
The applause is for Jim Palmer. He has one for three at the plate. Now it's two for four. Palmer singles to left with one out. The only men who have not hit have been Powell. Our next televised game will be Tuesday night with the Senators at Fen Long drive to right. And LaHood has... the center. Fly ball, Robinson going back, and he can't get this one, and Pavletic has homer by the Boston bullpen, and it is 12 to 3, Baltimore. Round ball to Belanger. Ball game. And the ball game is over. Doug Griffin grounds to shortstop in the ninth. One run on the home run by Pavletic, and nobody left. Six home runs in this ball game. Four for Oakland and two for Boston. The ground ball, Green flips the second run, back to first for a double play. Green to Campanaris to Epstein. There have been 25 hits here today. 19 runs have been scored. Oakland leads 11 to 8. Ground ball to short stop, and Campanaris watches it go by. Flipping his run. An error on Campanaris. Throws to Epstein and the Red Sox are out in the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, one error, one left. After eight full, Oakland leads 11 to 8. In 21 ball games this season. Field for a base hit. Lefty is on. Lead off batter in the ninth for the base hit. Jackson. Lyle first to stop for the out. Epstein running. Sacrificing Lefty in the second. He has tripled, struck out. Fly the left and single the right. There's a long drive to left field, and Bando hits one way up on the wall, takes the turn at first, and stays there as the run scores. Luckily, is home. Bando came within inches of a home run, high off the wall and left, and Luckily. Kronsky has walked twice, reached on a fielder's choice, and homered. Has scored two runs and driven one in. Scored three runs. Hit the ground into center field, and it is caught out there by Mangual. The audience. Any publication, new broadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Boston Red Sox is prohibited. Epstein makes the catch on Pepper Sully. Fly ball into left center field. Mangual and Rudy going over. 
And uh, it is Rody who makes the catch to end the ball game. The ball game is over, and the Oakland Athletics have evened the series here by beating the Red Sox 12 to 8 in a wild run at Fenway this afternoon. I'll be back with a recap for you in just a moment. The coaches at first base, Don Lenhart, and at third on the left of the screen is Ed Poposki. The Harrison went away. Sox is prohibited. John Kennedy is hitting 364. No homers, two runs batted in. Louis Aparicio started off before arriving in Washington on Thursday, and he hopes he'll be ready to pitch by that time. Kennedy loops one to center, and it's a base hit. John Kennedy singles into center field, and with one out, there's one on. This homestand. He gave up five hits and one run. Walked two and struck out two. G taking the pitch outside. The Royals Red Hot have won four straight, 10 of 11, 11 of 13. Mm. Base hit for Smith into left. Kennedy to second base. Kirk Patrick fielding the ball. Red Sox have runners at first and second with one out here in the first inning. Young left hander. Three balls and no strikes. There's ball four. Yastrzemski is on. The Red Sox have the bases full. There is Smith to second. Kennedy. hit into center field. One run is in. Here comes the second one, and the throw is sent into Patek to keep runners at first and second. Otis decided not to challenge the speed of Smith, so Kennedy and Smith are in. That's the third hit in this first inning. George Scott drive to right center. Otis going back. But he makes the catch. And Yastrzemski was halfway to third base and had to go back. Yes, must have thought the ball could not have been caught. Here's another look at it as Scotty ripped it. And Amos Otis made a great catch out in deep right center field. Ken, you could see Otis going back, drifting with the ball. The ball was hit high in the air, and for a minute, it looked like it had a chance to go out. Otis reached halfway up. Acquisition by this ball club. Ken, the thing that Otis does extremely well, he goes back on a ball well. Canigliaro hits one to Shaw. He throws to second for the force play that retires the side. But the Red Sox take a page out of the Royals' book. The Royals have been getting 14 runs batted in. Petroselli is in even with a bag at third. And the rest of the infield is up halfway. There's a line drive base hit to left field. Patek whacks one to left. There's a runner on. Now what he has been doing, number 100 lifetime, he's 99 and 68. He has allowed more than four runs only once in his 13 starts as a 2.21 earned run average. Fourth in the league among starters with seven or more decisions. Shawl is up. The runner goes. The pitch is a ball. He's safe. And Patek is now leading the American League in stolen bases with 16. He was tied with Campaneris and teammate Amos Otis. Here it is again as Patek on the very first pitch goes down to second, steals it. You notice he had another good jump, Ken. 
Otis is from uh, Mobile, Alabama. He worked for the Royals last winter. The runner goes. The pitch is a ball. He has stolen first. Otis goes to first base on the walk. This fellow has been especially tough against the Red Sox. The runner on first going, and Josephson holds the ball. Otis goes to second base. Okay, but we're watching him right now. Well, Ken, the only ball club in baseball today who will do this is the Dodgers. Well, they have Maury Wills and Willie Davis. Fly ball, Yastrzemski coming on. Patek tags. Here he comes, and the throw is off to the left, and he scores. Throw third, take there. The ball was not hit especially deep. The throw coming off to the left. Patek comes in to score. And Otis goes to third base. Here's another look. This there are the stolen base leaders as of this moment. Getting a lot of write in votes on the all star balloting. Whoops. Ball two. Rojas has been an all star before over in the National League with the Phils. Boston two and Kansas City one. Harrison, who's from Iowa, finished second to Galen Cisco from Southern Ohio in the cow milking contest. Harrison going back and. Very fine play by the Royals first baseman Chuck Harrison who had to go a long way. I didn't think Harrison would catch up to that ball Ken. One thing another thing that has happened to Harrison he's taken off some weight he's about 15 pounds lighter so evidently this thing is spreading. You were talking a little bit about speed. Uh, the New York Yankees have speed probably. All these birthdays with a victory huh? That's right today's Al Walker's birthday we got to win. Yeah, that's right. There's a drive to right field and Joe Keel. Griffin robbed by the right fielder Keel. And that is all in the Boston second inning. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. And after one and one half, Boston leads two to one. Griffin throws to Scott for the out. Keo and they'll play on the 27th, followed by Washington. After a couple of days in Detroit, New York is in for four games. Kennedy up. Hmm. Pops it up. Otis coming on. One away. There's a base hit. Smith singles sharply to right. Keo up with the ball as Reggie continues to hit it hard. Two for two. June 26th, 
It is not necessary to exchange ticket number 17. It will be honored for that night game, which is not to be confused with a regularly scheduled afternoon game on Saturday, the 26th of June. Carl Yastrzemski had a walk in the first inning. One out and one on. Hits it to left. Kirkpatrick takes it deep. Deep right center field. Otis back for this one. And he makes another catch out there at the wall. Petroselli gives it a pretty good ride. No runs on one hit and one man left on. In the middle of the third inning, it's Boston 2 and Kansas City 1. We'll be back with more Red Sox action in a minute. Have any kind of win, you most outfielders realize this. We'll try to get back behind the ball and come forward to it if they possibly can. Played it. It kind of played it off like you're shielding yourself in the sun. Patek strikes out. One away. Here's a drive to left center field by Shaw. And this one is second base. It's a double. Paul Shaw doubles to left center field. Kirkpatrick is on the lines of Lolich of the Tigers. <laughs> he looks like he might be able to drop a few. He's got a pretty good front porch. <laughs> and Scotty is out. Splittorf just reached out and picked that ball up like he was picking an apple off the table. It was shaded a little over in the right center. Joe Keo straight away in, in right and uh, Kirkpatrick all over in left center. Line drive, base hit. Kirkpatrick up with the ball. So Josephson singles to left. Doug Griffin in the on-deck circle. Line drive to left field. Sonny chips in with one. That is the sixth hit off of Splittorf. So the Red Sox here in the fourth with two out, have a man on first and second. Brings up Doug Griffin who bounced a short and line to right, Reggie Smith in the on-deck circle. Ball four. So Doug draws a walk. That is only the second walk off of Splittorf. And the runners move up. Josephson to third, Siebert to second, of course. Griffin on first. Brings up Reggie Smith, who has Rather, uh, I said Reggie Smith earlier, but it's John Kennedy. Kennedy, who singled and flew out to center field his last time. Reggie Smith is in the on-deck circle now. There you see Bob Lemon. And Miss Baltimore now leads Chicago 1-0 after 3. And Cleveland leads Milwaukee 10-0 after 3. Minnesota at Detroit and... Uh, the Yankees playing the athletics out on the coast in California and Washington later on this afternoon. San Francisco trails the New York Mets 3-1 to one at the end of three. Los Angeles 64, no home runs and two runs batted in. John, a good handyman, can play two or three places, can play second, short or third. And get a fellow this caliber that can move around the infield can help you. It doesn't hurt your ball club too much because he does so many things well. 
ball gets away. In comes Josephson to score. So a wild pitch charged to Fitzmorris. So the Red Sox lead three to one. Siebert goes over to third and Doug Griffin to second base. Al Fitzmorris is 6-2, weighs 185, and is from Buffalo, New York, but now lives in San Diego. Strike. Call. So that's all for the Red Sox. There were one run on two hits, no errors, and two men left on base. So after three and one half, it's Boston three and Kansas City one. hit. Petroselli with a great effort that time. Lost the glove in the process. Now that is not against Ray Culp. Three runs, six hits, and one error for Oakland. Well, let's see. That's going to be seven. Yep. A base hit in front of Yastrzemski in left center. Carl had no shot at it. And Epstein is on with nobody out in the sixth inning. Back in Oakland, and uh, Blue Moon Odom, a pitcher, is going to run, I guess, for Mike Epstein after Epstein leads with a single here in the sixth. There's Odom running for Epstein. The youngster up in the upper deck, or not the complete upper deck, Ned, but the youngster with a glove just reached up and caught that ball as nice as you please. Good for him. Picked it, huh? The butt. Hope to Scott. Odom to third. Bando is out on the bunt. And they've got Rowe and one left. After six innings of play, Oakland three. Thank you, John. Scott has struck out swinging and has reached on an error by Reggie Jackson in right field. A ball get loose down in the Red Sox bullpen slight delay and now catfish hunter ready to work Bando is calling and Sal makes the catch for the out Scott pops up Mike Hegan is now at first base as Epstein left the ball game for the pinch runner Jackson and Mangual converging, and it's Reggie Jackson to make the catch. Canigliaro flies out, two down on the Boston seven. Nothing and two. So if Montgomery can keep it going, Fiore will be batting for Culp. Keegan going after this one, and he makes a spectacular catch of the ball. Mike Hegan makes a great play. And that's all for the Red Sox in the seventh inning on the play of the day. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. At the middle of the seventh inning, Oakland has a three to one lead. Strike three. Mike Fiore strikes out. Hustler. He's always making himself available for a possibility of a play. This is just good baseball instinct. He's been that way most of his uh, baseball life, I believe. Even when he was Washington as a youngster, as a shortstop, he made himself available a lot of places. This is good. Pop fly. Mangual coming on, and it's uh, Mangual. He had trouble, so they all had trouble. Good young ball player. 
Louis Aparicio is up now. He is fly to center, line to center, and pop to second. Strike one. Aparicio lines one into center field for a base hit. Juggled momentarily, but not enough for any advance to be made. And so Louis has a single into center field. Now Ken Brett has uh, gone back and sat down, and Bill Lee has started to warm up, or will be momentarily, with uh, Louis Tion. Hunter on the mound. And we're getting some action in the Oakland bullpen now as we look at Daryl Knowles, the left-hander, and Jim Grant, the right-hander. him out and at the middle of eight Oakland leads 3-1. Right time. You can send your contributions to the Jimmy Fund Boston Mass 02117. Five ball deep to left. Yastrzemski back. Jackson has another home run. <laughs> Reggie Jackson is going the other way today, and he has hit two home runs and a double. All to left or left center. So he's been a big man for this ball core and Boston won. Drive to center field, Mangual going back. Makes the catch. Reggie Smith flies to center. Struck out again. Mike Keegan makes the grab for the second out. Two down in the ninth inning, and George Scott coming up. One strike on Scott. Ground ball to Sal Bando. He throws to Hegan, and the ball game is over. And Oakland takes the second game of the series here by a score of 4-1. And we'll be back with a recap on today's game in just a moment. 